Australian debt levels are at the highest level they have ever been. Not only that, but we're having so much inflation into the system, yet no one's reporting about it. In this video, I'm going to share with you the exact warning that I make to you guys to really understand what's happening. The Australian debt levels being so high, interest rate levels being so low, and property prices being so high, I want to make sense of it so that you know how to prepare adequately for what's about to come. Keep watching. Hey guys, my name's Ravi Sharma and I'm the founder and buyer's agent here at Search Property. Thank you so much for joining me on yet another episode of Search Property TV. If you're new here, smash that subscribe button. If you've returned here but not a subscriber, and I believe 50% of you aren't, simply smash that subscribe button. I'll wait for you, I'll give you two seconds. Awesome, now that we've hit that, hit the bell icon so that you know when I'm going to drop this time sensitive information next. Now in this video, I want to discuss with you exactly what's happening with the economy. Why I am so bullish on Australian property, not because I'm a buyer's agent, no, no. I've been saying this for six to nine months. Whether you use my services or not, I do not really care. I'm here to help the people that want to hear this. If this is not sort of content that you want, you can turn off the video now and uh, enjoy the other garbage that's on YouTube. However, if you are serious about investing, if you are serious about creating real generational wealth in the next 12 to 24 months, I think you should watch. If you have debt, if you don't have debt, you need to really understand why and why not certain people, why media outlets are coming out and saying certain things because your wealth, the money that you work for 40, 50 hours a week is disappearing and you don't even know it. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how you can prepare for what's coming and what I believe is going to happen to not only property prices, but to the price of cryptocurrency, stock markets, and is there a correction and a crash coming like some people keep saying on YouTube. Let's jump into it. Now, I've said this a few times in my videos across my channel that debt will make you rich if you know how to use it. Unfortunately, when we went to school, no one taught us exactly what debt was and that we only saw our parents that used to go through, grind, you know, week in, week out, working really hard to pay off their mortgage. So in our minds, we've gone, oh, debt's bad. A mortgage is bad. And so I'm never going to get it. And so we go through schooling and they don't teach you shit about real life stuff. Uh, they teach you more about chemistry and you know Pythagoras theorem, like who the F cares about that? We wanna know exactly how to create wealth, but also keep it. A lot of people go through their 20s and I'm the same, you know, not educated coming out of university going, oh, I've got a bachelor's degree, look at me. Some people went on and did masters and postgrad. And to be honest, those are the same people coming out and going, I actually don't know if I should invest or I'm just going to buy a home and then I'll buy a unit because that's what parents told me to do. Like, it's not good enough. We need to be accountable and this is a very important video. If you really want to understand what's about to happen, I suggest you watch. Now, a lot of people may come out in the comments and go, oh, look, Ravi's just selling me something or, oh, look, Ravi's talking shit again about debt and inflation. <sighs> The reality is there's a lot of context. There's a reason why I'm producing more content than anyone else in the Australian finance and real estate space here. There's a reason for that because I am definitely passionate about this content, but also about helping people at scale. I'm sharing my knowledge. I feel like it's the right thing to do. If it's not something you enjoy, you can simply turn off and walk away, right? You can watch anything else. You're not here, you're here by choice. And so for me, I'm here by choice trying to create some content for you to get ahead to understand that despite the fact that you are watching this, 99% of people will still not act. I hope you're not that person, all right? Now, a lot of people during a time like a pandemic, a recession, everything that's been going on in 2020, now 2021, a lot of people saying, get out of debt. Interest rates are so cheap. Why do you want debt? Pay it down now because it will go back up. Everything works in cycles. Now, I agree, everything does work in cycles, but unfortunately, what cycles we're looking at, what we're actually teaching other people is very wrong. And the reason why nobody really talks about this sort of stuff in the detail that it should be spoken about, at least in Australia, is because they simply don't know, right? Uh, and I don't claim to be a professional, I don't claim to be an expert, and you know, definitely not giving financial advice here. 
I'm just sharing my experience of learning about these markets for the last seven years, building a portfolio of more than four and a half million and what it really means. For me, it was important to understand how debt works, how inflation works, how interest rates work and how the economy, especially in Australia works, because I had so much debt in the system that I needed to understand how it worked so that I could insulate myself and really take advantage of what's happening here. So I understand that if you know, you've been struggling during these times and there's some, some of you out there that are, that are looking at going, oh, well, I better now reduce my debt. Guys, we need to get into a mo positive mindset is because we've adopted that negative mindset is the reason why we're here today is the reason why we only have one property or the house that we live in and now we have to work because if we stop working or we lose our job, we lose our house. We can't make the mortgage repayments. And it's that exact same thought that people are carrying over into the next cycle, into the next phase. The truth is some people on this channel that are watching will know what happened in 2008, 2009, 2010. Yes, we had a global financial crisis. You know, a lot of people didn't know what was happening and we saw markets collapse, right? Now, Australian property was very different as to how it got affected. And, you know, I'm not gonna go into a deep dive into what that looks like, but if you are interested in more of a deep dive video around that, definitely leave me a comment down below. But essentially what we're trying to focus here on is we had uncertainty, we saw markets drop slightly, and I believe some areas, five to 15%, which isn't drastic, right? We saw five to 15% drop, and we saw the government come out and start printing stimulus, right? And giving out stimulus, um, I believe Kevin Rudd was in power at the time and he started giving everyone bonuses, right? And so with that money, we increase the money supply, right? So money supply, right? Money supply goes up when there's more money being printed because there's just more supply. Now, as the money supply increases, our currency value, our currency value goes down, okay? So more supply means currency value goes down. It's the same as with real estate, right? So if we were looking at, let's say, you know, there's one house, right? One house available for sale, but there's two people that want this house, right? Two people, that's my amazing drawing there coming through. So if there's two people, that means demand is higher than supply, okay? So in that case, we would see price growth. In this case, if we've now got, say, three houses, we now have demand below supply. So if supply is higher than demand, we will see value go down. So why I explain that is because what we are seeing in the market currently is we've got interest rates at record lows, okay? Debt levels are soaring through the roof. So why is this important? Because most people are going to be going out there and purchasing a house to live in, and they'll go interest plus principal, right? Because they're like, well, this component I can pay now because debt is cheap, right? So if debt's cheap, I can smash more of my principal down, and that means I can pay off my home loan in say, instead of 30 years, I can pay it off in 22 years, okay? But what are we, what are we doing as the offset? You know, what's the opportunity cost here? Well, in order to understand what the opportunity cost here is, we need to understand what is happening and why it's happening. So that's why I provide context and if you don't enjoy my voice, you're probably not accustomed to 20, 30 minute videos about the Australian economy, get strapped in. We're on a whiteboard today and we're gonna make, uh, make this a long one. <laughs> okay, so to illustrate my point, I've got my whiteboard and I'm gonna show you two examples, right? Option A and option B. Now, 99% of people, and I keep saying 99, I'm just saying a majority of people will go with option A. And I'm gonna show you exactly what that translates to. The fact is that yes, we have cheap debt. Yes, interest rates at some point will go up, but we need to understand why interest rates go up in the first place, right? Interest rates are there in place by the central banks to control our level of inflation and economic activity. If interest rates go up, it means the cost of borrowing is higher, which means less money in our pocket left as disposable income to then go and purchase nice you know, food at cafes, nice cars and renovate our houses. But when we've got interest rates lower, it's because the government really wants us to you know, have more economic activity so that you know, we can have prosperity in the economy. That's why we had you know, major shutdowns in 2020. We had all this money being printed. That comes into the system. A lot of people have free money, they can use that. If they use that, companies then operate a bit more, then they can hire people and that's how the economy restarts, right? So that's in a nutshell is why it happens. So 
If interest rates are low and they're gonna stay low for at least the next two to three years, what are we trying to do? Are we trying to pay down our loan or are we gonna use the debt to become wealthier and create generational wealth? I'm gonna show you exactly what that looks like. So if in option A, we are to go, you know, let's just focus on interest plus principal payments. Let's take on a loan and pay down our debt. Cheap debt, right? Cheap interest rates. Let's pay down our debt while we can. That's the mentality. So if that's the case, and let's say we buy a house for $250,000. Now, look, these numbers are not so important. It's the principles I want you to take away from this, right? But if we buy a home for $250,000, and then 20 years later, right, we're going interest plus principal, and 20 years later, we see the value at $800,000. Now, to give you some context around how I get these numbers, these are actually conservative numbers. If we look back 20 years ago, which would put us in 20, 2001, 2002, um, Purchasing property at that time versus what they are valued for now, I don't care where you look, right? You will see significant amounts of growth. So we're just taking an average and we've plugged in those numbers. So if you're looking at now and what happens in the next 20 years, um, that would be applying, you know, same principles, same sort of averages, um, although historical data, you know, is a good indication of what's coming, but it's not a prediction. However, for this exercise, I've just gone backwards in time because hindsight's a beautiful thing. And we go $250,000 is what we bought the house for. Let's say we took out a 250K loan, right? So 100% borrowed. So we borrow 100%, so we, our loan at the time is $250,000. Now, 20 years later, that house is now worth $800,000, but our loan is now 110,000. Now here, what's important is interest plus principal meant that a lot of our repayments that we were making, the extra cash flow we got from the property, we took, and we plugged it straight back into the property to pay down the loan, okay? That's very important to understand, is that when we're going interest plus principal, a very big misconception, especially when growing wealth in real estate, is that people focus on interest plus principal. Why would you go interest only? Like, that's dumb. Is it though? With inflation, debt becomes irrelevant. And this is why debt will make you rich. Now, so in option B, let's say they bought the same house for $250,000, yet they went interest only. So by going interest only, what they were able to do was they had positive cash flow coming in, so the rent was higher than their expenses, and that allowed them to save that money. So they used to put that into an offset account and just get that money and just save, save, save. Now, instead of option A, where most people are, and they plan to go, you know what, instead of having the extra cash sit in our bank account or buy more property with debt, we want to reduce our debt. So instead, what we're gonna do is all the savings we make from our jobs as well, will plug into paying down the home loan. So that's what they're doing here. But in option B, we've got interest only, we're not touching the principal. And what we're able to do is five years later, right, we're able to buy another house. Now, for the purpose of this exercise, we're gonna say it's the same sort of house in the same sort of location and all the averages stack up. So that house that was worth 250 is now worth 320. So they go out and they buy the same property at 320. So all averages work out. In 20 years time, both properties should be worth $800,000 each. Now here's the kicker. Here's the main point that I'm trying to make in this video around debt, inflation, and why we can actually take advantage of what we're seeing right now. Is in this option, we had one property at $800,000, but we also had debt. Remember that? We had 110K left. So we've been paying it down and we're doing well. So our equity position here is about $690,000. However, in this case, we didn't worry about that. We're like, interest rates will go up, they'll go down, who cares? As long as we can secure good properties, good assets that produce good income, right? In good fundamental areas that have long-term growth as well, we're gonna be all right. So we purchase one more, okay? Now, our asset value is 1.6 million because there's two properties worth 800K each. So 1.6 million. The loans are 250 because we took out 250 at 100% and we took 320 at 100% as well. Obviously we can't get 100% loans, but for the purpose of this exercise is what I'm trying to show you, is now our debt is $570,000. So 110, right? This guy here, option A, he's cheering because he's like, well, you got debt, mate. This one has two properties and has debt of 570,000. So not only has it increased, but we're saying nothing changed. 
right? Inflation came into the system and that is what really is driving our property prices up. It's not the fact that, oh wow, these properties are so much nicer now. In fact, I feel like the value, the, the condition of these properties that are getting built now are worse than what they were 30 years ago. But it's the value of our currency that drops and that means that when inflation kicks in, right, everything becomes more expensive, real estate goes up as well. It's asset price inflation. So as that goes up, our debt, it stays the same. The only thing that moves is interest rates could go up or could go down. Now we are long past, you know, seeing interest rates of 15, 20% unless we see hyperinflation, which Personally, I don't think it's gonna happen in Australia. I think we are going to see high levels of inflation. I don't know if we see hyperinflation. If we see hyperinflation, this, all of this is amplified. And the whole reason about taking on debt, uh, when we've got high inflationary times, you can just 10X everything because in hyperinflation, that's like next level. It's not great. <laughs> um, but if you're on the right side of it, you can take advantage. What we're focusing on is the fact that $570,000 20 years later sounds like nothing, right? If we were to use equivalent numbers, we're really looking at, okay, if you took on debt now, it's very hard for us to say, oh, well, property that I'm buying now is a million dollars, but you're saying in... 20 years time could be worth $12 million? That doesn't sound right to me. Yeah, it doesn't. It seems crazy until it isn't, right? Same thing happened back then when people were buying 200K homes that are now worth 1.1, 1.2 million, they were also saying the same thing. But what we need to understand is the reason for that is not because property prices are going up, it's because our currency is losing value. Right? This is why we're seeing increase in asset prices like real estate, like stocks, like cryptocurrency. Right? We need to understand that the fiat currency we use is garbage right? and we've been losing value every single year. But most people don't even know that. Most people don't even know what fiat currency is. Right? But what I'm trying to say here is here we're holding two properties for 1.6 million as our asset base. That as a combination means you're holding more than a million dollars worth of equity here. And that was simply to go, well, all you have to do is use one house and pay down the rest of the debt. You'll be in a better equity position than you were here by simply taking on that negative mindset to go, no, 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 I don't want debt. I read in some book by you know the barefoot investor where debt is bad. Now, don't get me wrong. If you don't know how to manage your emotions, you are gonna be shit with money, right? That's just, it, it's, it's 101. Oh, I don't mind, I'm having a big weekend. Okay, I'm gonna spend all my money. I've got a credit card, let's spend it. Okay, well, that's dumb, all right? That's just dumb. Use some logic, right? If, if you understand how to use productive debt, attach it to the right assets, you're gonna make a lot of money, especially during an inflationary period where our fiat currency drops in value if your money is sitting in fiat currency and the value drops, this is why we're seeing affordability issues and we're gonna continue seeing them. Most people that come out on YouTube or you know, write these nice articles on Facebook saying that, oh wow, no, property prices are actually overvalued and they're gonna go down. Have you seen our debt levels? Well, no shit, we've seen debt levels. Do you understand why? Do you understand why interest rates are going down and they'll stay down? I'm not saying I have all the answers for everything, right? But what I'm saying is everyone has a duty of care when you put out content out onto the internet and people like yourself are watching. I feel like I need to put out the right information, not self-serving or not clickbaity so that you can you know, give me some views or subscribe to my channel. At the end of the day, there's only two ways you're gonna go about this. Is either you're gonna be productive and positive about it or you're gonna be negative and you're gonna still do the same things that got you to here in this time at this point. So have a chat with your parents or have a chat with your grandparents and ask them, what, was, what were you making? What was your salary, right? And they'll say, oh, we're making about $20,000 a year and that was really big for that time. Or, oh, okay, well, I saved up $30,000. That was really big for that time. Why do they say that? It's because now, in context, $30,000 sounds like nothing, right? People are making 100K plus in their jobs and that, 20 years ago was like if you were the CEO or C-level executive at a really big bank or something, right? And so now that's become normal. Hence why I'm saying debt becomes irrelevant with inflation. Right now, it's like going, well, if I borrowed and I bought a house 20 years ago in Sydney for $100,000, right? And I took up 100K of debt. 
Now that at 100K of debt at that time would have sounded like, oh my God, this is my world. Like this is crazy, right? 20 years later, that property is now worth 1 million, but your debt is still 100K. And now today, if you've got 100K of debt, you're like, what the hell? Like I could pay that off in two years. And that's what I'm saying is about to come. But because we are so short-sighted, we look at the noise that's around us and oh, okay, that's what that means. No, 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 no. We need to deep dive into it. And I get it. You may not be passionate about this stuff like I am, right? And that's why you're here on this channel. If you haven't subscribed, smash that subscribe button. But if you really want to understand exactly how to take advantage of it, how to get into real estate the proper way, right? I wouldn't be here creating content around it. I wouldn't have a business around a buyer's agency if there weren't people that needed to understand how to do it quickly or to how to do it sustainably. That's more important. If you are interested in that, there's a link in the description below, Confusion to Clarity online course. It's very simple, three hours of exclusive content across four different modules. You will not regret that purchase. Honestly guys, right now with inflation where it's at, this is massive, very, very big and very important for you to understand. I know I'll come back to this video and I'm gonna quote it somewhere. I'm gonna share this video in two, three years time. Just like I was sharing the videos that I made nine months ago saying property prices aren't going down. We're about to hit a property boom. At that time, I heard a lot of people say a lot of shit, say negative comments, say, oh, this guy's you know self-serving. Hey, at the end of the day, it still happened, right? Now, for me, I would much rather be historically correct than to try and make an extra couple of dollars. Anyone that knows me, anyone that's been on a strategy session knows I am passionate about this stuff. I'm here to genuinely help at scale right? Hence why I created the course. If you're interested, get onto the course. If you want a one-on-one -on -one session, uh, there's a link in the description. There's limited spots for a strategy session. So you can definitely go book that as well. But for me, it's very important. It's very simple. I want to be more in debt right now than I've ever been before. I cannot wait to go to the bank and ask for more debt. Honestly, you've got to figure out your own financial position. Of course, this is not financial advice, but if you can look at the logic behind both options, understand why I'm saying what I'm saying, you're gonna see why a lot of people fall into option A and will always be stuck in option A. If you guys enjoy this sort of content, definitely consider subscribing and going and watching some of the older videos on this channel. There is so much information here, valuable information for free, but if you wanna take it a step further, there's three hours of exclusive content to take you from point A to point B. Confusion to Clarity, the online course, is all about how to buy your first investment or how to buy your first property to live in. This is very important. We cover everything from mindset to the loan aspect of what loans to get and how to actually apply for a mortgage and what that means to then scaling up to actually build a property portfolio. The content on that you know, online course is different to what's out here. It's extended from here and it's everything that you need to get started in one place. You can spend hours and hours trying to research this stuff or go into the one place, actually educate yourself. And um, there's a link in the description for that too. Guys, thank you so much for watching all the way through. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thanks guys.